So before we look at the molecular formula, structural formula, and the skeletal formula, I want you to know this. Carbon will have four bonds. We can see right here, carbon, one, two, three, four. This carbon here, one, two, three, four. Carbon will form four bonds. Sometimes we'll have a double bond that counts for two or a triple bond that counts for three. Carbon though, four bonds. So let's do this molecular formula. We have butane, which is C4H10. That's the molecular formula, C4H10. Has a lot of good, useful information for us about number of atoms. The structural formula, that shows us how they're arranged. So here for the structural formula, we write all of the carbons and all of the hydrogens. Because it's butane, there won't be any branches, just four carbons in a row. When we get to the skeletal formula, this is really stripped down. We have the carbons, one, two, three, four. So on the ends and where things bend, and it shows us the shape. We start to see some of the geometry. And then the hydrogens, each carbon would have four hydrogens. But we don't write the hydrogens, and we don't even write the carbons. In organic chemists, they look at this, they know this is butane. Let's do some overlays real quick so you can visualize this. So if we put our butane model over here, you can see one, two, three, four with the hydrogens around. You can also put it over here and one, two, three, four carbons and the hydrogens, three around this one, two around this one, two and three. So now you know the difference. Let's practice. You have the model down here and I've given you the structural formula, write the molecular formula and then the skeletal formula. Pause, give that a try. So we can just count everything up. One, two, three, four, five carbons. If you count the hydrogens, you'll have 12. That's the molecular formula. We have the structural formula. This one has a branch, a methyl group right here. Let's write the skeletal. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we have this carbon here. So we'll just put a line here. So there's a carbon there. And we don't draw the hydrogens or the carbons because it's the skeletal formula or the bond line formula as it's sometimes called. If we lay this over top, you can see how it lines up. Over here, it lines up as well. Okay, one more. We're gonna go back this time from the skeletal formula and then we're going to write the structural formula and again, the molecular formula here. So give that a try. Write the structural formula and the molecular formula based on the skeletal formula and the model here. So I can count them up here from the model. One, two, three, four, C4. And if you count the hydrogens, those are the white, you'll have 10. It's kind of interesting. We had C4H10 with a different structural formula and skeletal formula. So the molecular formula gives you some good information, but not all the information you need to know the structure. The name's helpful too, though. Structural formula, I have one, two, three. I'm just gonna write them in a row. One, two, three. And then up here, I have another carbon. Then I would write the hydrogens in, and I'm not gonna write each hydrogen in. You can see they're there. That would be the structural formula once you wrote the hydrogens in. You can do an overlay. You can see everything lines up here and then over here with our overlay lines up pretty well too. The key to remember the molecular formula that tells us the number of atoms. With the structural formula, we see how they're arranged with the carbons and all the hydrogens. And then with that skeletal formula, we have less information. It's more concise, but it also shows us the molecular geometry. And of course, the model, that's kind of nice too, helps you visualize. This is Dr. B looking at the difference between the molecular formula, structural formula, and skeletal formula. Thank you for watching.